Um, so this is a lightning talk. It's going to be a little fast. I have to leave some room for questions uh, towards the end, so it's going to be a little fast. Um, this talk comes from conversations and ideas uh, from internal to my company and with clients and other pen testers. It's kind of an opinion-oriented talk, um, but we'll see how it goes. So my goals for this talk, uh, first of all, I want to communicate uh, my opinion on how web security has evolved over the years. Uh, to back that up, I want to show a very brief history of web application security. It's going to be cherry picked from a couple sources. Um, I want to define this word assertions. I want to uh, try to effectively communicate what I mean by that. And I want to show that modern web security is better defined by these assertions. And uh, the history hopefully backs up that claim. That's kind of my uh, thesis statement right there. Um, I also want to talk about where it's going. Um, you know, I have no idea, but I want to speculate on a couple different different paths it can take. So um, yeah, we'll try to hit each of those points during this talk. So uh, for me to give my opinion, I think it's important to also give you my point of view, where I'm coming from. Um, I co-founded a company called Doyensec. We specialize in application security. We're a small consulting firm with less than 10 people. We want to stay small. I think 15 is the biggest we would ever want to get. Um, we do different things, reverse engineering, pen testing. Um, we solve pretty much any security problem that clients uh, bring us. Uh, but we specialize in web application security. That's our bread and butter. That's what we do most of all. So we're three years old, over 80 clients. Um, it's important to tell you the type of clients we have. Most of them are in the tech industry. I say that because um, it implies that most of the code bases that we audit are newer. So they come with newer frameworks, uh, newer technologies, newer languages. For example, we haven't reviewed a PHP app in over a year, maybe. Um, this is a nice little diagram that shows life cycle of pretty much everything. I tried to apply it to web security. And after this, I want to go into the history, as I see it, of web security. So where is web security now? Well, we know it's not in the egg form. Uh, we have this term, web security. We know it's not in the embryo form. I think, uh, you know, back years ago, the word penetration testing used to mean auditing a network, auditing infrastructure, getting IPs from the external standpoint. Now, when a client asks me, can I have a penetration test, they pretty much always mean they have um, some web platform to review. So even the terminology has changed. Web security has really um, taken over the security, information security space, I feel. And uh, it's become way more important these days. So I'm also low on time, so I'm going to skip a little bit. Uh, to summarize the slide, I think that uh, right now the industry is between hatching and chicks. I see hatching as the injection phase. This phase when the tooling and the knowledge base became good enough to where text, uh, testers can find injection bugs and exploit these bugs at a pretty reliable rate. Uh, chicks I see as the assertion phase of web security. Um, it's this new thing that it's evolving into. I know for sure it's not the chicken phase. Uh, you know, web security has not reached its final form yet. There's still new techniques coming out, new vuln classes. The uh, port swigger is always releasing cool stuff. The HTTP smuggling is really awesome. So it hasn't reached its final form yet, of course. Now, one of the historical sources I'm going to draw from is the OWASP top 10. I feel like it's one of those rare resources that we have which shows the um, either the perce perception or the actual evolution of this thing we call web security. So we can extrapolate different information from the top 10. For example, this shows the years 2013 to 2017. You can see that cross-site scripting goes from the third place to the seventh place. Now, why is that? What, you know, what assumptions can we make from that? Well, we know that React came out in 2013. So these, this rise of uh, the client-side framework sort of uh, follows the trend that um, you know, it helps protect against cross-site scripting, and so cross-site scripting goes down to the seventh place. This is the overall chart from uh, 2003 to 2017. And again, there's a bunch of assumptions we can make here. 
So unfortunately, things like injection and cross-site scripting, authentication and you know, sensitive data stuff has always been an issue. I think it's always going to be an issue. It's just kind of like a built-in feature of web security at this point, unfortunately. We see some failed categories as well. Um, unvalidated input, denial of service, remote admin flaws, unprotected APIs. You know, I don't know why these failed. Uh, I didn't look in, into this too deeply, but um, you know, I feel like as web security has evolved, the terms have evolved as well. Maybe these just were too vague or they couldn't actually fit the path that web security went down. What's really interesting about this chart, I think, is the last issue, insufficient logging and monitoring. Uh, this is a new thing. It's all the way at the bottom. Uh, I think it's interesting because it's very different from all these other bugs on this chart. It's not a straight injection issue. It's not a easily defined kind of thing. It, le it leaves a lot of the um, implementation up to the actual security expert. So this kind of finding is maybe an indication that um, that helps support my thesis, hopefully, that we are moving into this assertion phase of web security. Uh, so just very briefly, um, you know, we see things like injection, just to back up my historical claim for this chart, things like injection, we see it go from A6 to A1 in uh, between 2004 and 2007. So why could that be? Well, we know Burp came out in 2004 and between 2007 and 9, the inject, uh, the scanner in Burp improved a lot. So this supports my thesis that, uh, you know, as the tooling, as the knowledge base gets stronger and increases, testers have found more injection issues. But now that uh, injection issues are starting to go away, as these things are beco becoming more rare, we are naturally moving into uh, an assertion frame of mind, which I want to try to define better. Also, real quick, um, you know, throughout the years doing pen testing, there's been certain times where I feel like uh, my job security is not there for the future. Things like uh, these client-side frameworks. You know, the, the scare was like cross-site scripting would just go away and that'll be it for my job, right? Automated scanners, we've seen SAT solvers, SMT solvers, all these different kinds of web scanners come out. And you know, that's scary for a pen tester, this competition. Uh, education among developers has increased. Snake oil is always there. Bug bounties, that was another big scare. The hope was for bug bounties to completely replace pen testing. And of course, all these new languages. Uh, my experience right now as a, a co-founder of Doinsec is that pen testing is just growing at an incredibly fast rate. More and more companies are seeking out security experts. So it's still there. Uh, there's always been articles about it. Um, the assumption is that pen testing is still here, so it must provide some value. That's an assumption I make. Now, as a pen tester, I want to provide value to my clients. If I can't find bugs, I'm not providing value. As inject injection bugs get rarer and my reports get lighter, I'm providing less value to my clients. So we have to look deeper. We have to find other sorts of bugs. And that's where uh, the assertions come into play. So um, injection bugs tend to be well explained, SQL injection, command execution. They tend to be very neat, very easily defined, and very uh, straightforward to fix. There's a ton of uh, articles out there about these kinds of bugs. So it's very well explained. Most people these days know what SQL injection is. I have a friend who uh, is taking a bootstrapping class and uh, she's learning Node.js and uh, you know, SQL for the first time. And they're teaching her what SQL injection is. So the general knowledge base among developers has increased quite a bit in terms of security. As opposed to injection bugs, assertion bugs are much harder to define. There's no simple subcategories for injection bugs. You can't say, you can't point to a line of code and say, hey, this is uh, easily fixed with parameterized queries. It's usually uh, the definitions are vaguer, are more vague. So OWASP has this really nice uh, article here on their website. They try to define business logic flaws. I like some of these quotes. The second one that it's understudied is uh, very true. Um, 
Perfect. And the third one is uh, what I'm up here doing, debating whether it's uh, they are new concepts or not. I don't think they're new. I think it's just a natural way that testers are moving. So where do assertions come from? Well, anywhere, really. Comments in source code, to-do statements, of course. Um, even comparing functions in source code. If one acts differently than another, comparing them within roles. You make your own uh, assertions as a security tester. RFCs, the OAuth one is, you know, we use that a lot. Um, any statements, if any behaviors contradict statements made in RFCs, that's a break of a security assertion. Of course, conversations and meetings with engineers, API docs, design docs, architecture documents, um, and so forth. So the point here is that as a security tester, you're, you're trying to find these assertions. The client may not know about them. You are creating these assertions for the client, and you're noting that in the report. The client can dispute it, of course, but um, at the end of the day, hopefully the client knows more about their code than you do. And that follows you know, the conversation about providing value, providing value through making these assertions for the client. So I want to present some examples of um, assertions being broken. You know, a simple one was uh, this really nice bug, this 2FA bypass for PayPal. Um, you know, if you want to look at it from a logical point of view, um, there's a bunch of assertions being made to even parse the protocol to get to this point. Uh, you assume that PayPal will check all these parameters. They'll check all the values of these parameters. He found out he could break that assertion by simply removing those parameters, and he bypassed the 2FA. This one is really cool. Um, he read a API doc with this message on the bottom saying he should not be able to access direct messages. This finding is uh, only there because he read that line. He found that he could. So he, the assertion was made by the developers in this case, and he found that he could break it, and that provided you know, a lot of value to Twitter. Of course, um, IDOR bugs, same kind of thing. This one's really nice because the assertion comes from him visiting one endpoint and then visiting a second and seeing that the, uh, the data he received back was different. So uh, he made the assumption that this data was being leaked and he uh, broke that assertion. There's lots of examples like this, PII data. Uh, sensitive data. The U.S. Department of Defense, I think, has a hard time because anytime they post a, um, you know, some asset online, a slides or whatever, and something is censored out, they're making an assertion. So all those pieces of information that are censored out, if you can find them somewhere where they're not censored, then you're breaking that assertion. So there's tons of uh, findings like this on the Hacker One for uh, the Department of Defense. Okay, this one I wanted to put in here because this is just beautiful, the write-up for this one. It's 1,400 words. There's tons of uh, screenshots and code snippets here. It's for GitLab, which is open source. So it's hard to explain, but if you guys wanted to check one out that is a little more complicated, this would be a nice one to see. He basically finds three areas in the code where these small assertions are being broken, and he chains them all together to uh, bypass a lot of authorization checks. So it's just a simply a beautiful finding. Now this paper came out, another example of uh, what I'm talking about here, this paper came out, these slides and this talk came out by the, this organization, this group of people, and they analyzed, you know, how, what is the flow like? What is the integration like with uh, third-party payment services like PayPal uh, or Shopify? And if you go through their slides, they they are making assumptions everywhere, assertions everywhere, and they're breaking them. And they end up giving a whole large list of uh, findings to these uh, merchants. And uh, they kind of changed the industry. Um, in, you know, it uh, made all these merchants uh, take security more seriously. It was a pretty big article when it was released. But you can see things like um, there's insufficient checks for security, for signatures, uh, for sensitive assets like that. And this all provides value to these merchants. So as a pen tester, I want to find issues like this, logic issues, business logic issues, 
to provide value to my clients. So um, to summarize all that, I think uh, there's a different mentality that needs to be made. Um, you know, I think about, I saw this, this uh, show on ESPN, they were talking about if you take a boxer from today, an average boxer, and bring him back to the 50s or 40s, how much more, how amazing would he be in boxing? Because the sport has developed so much. So I wonder if you take a pen tester from today and bring him back to the early 2000s, how, much, how awesome should he be? How much value can he provide to the clients, right? Uh, I think we've gotten to the point where we are experts at injection bugs. Um, we've automated that task away. We have code that finds injection bugs for us. So we have to evolve beyond that. I think um, the baseline of skills is always increasing for us in any skill set, any industry. And I think web security is not an exception. I define uh, this mentality of auditing for assertions as um, the ability to uh, define the behavior and the expectations of the target. If you can do that effectively as a security tester, if you can define the behavior of an application for the clients and then break those behaviors, you're providing a lot of value to the client. So um, I want to shift into what I think about the future of web security. I have no idea. Uh, you know, I think assertion bugs are going to just pick up more and more. Our reports, the majority of our findings are assertion bugs. Um, as I said, we test very new code from uh, newer companies. And it's kind of rare for us to find a SQL injection bug, for example. Um, I found one two weeks ago, so that's not a good example, but it is rare for us to find one. I remember years ago when the, you know, 2011, for example, you could run burp scanner on a website and it'll fill up like a Christmas tree with findings all over the place. That's just not the case anymore. There's, it's a different landscape for code. So this is inspirational, this, uh, well, the whole concept of speed running, finding these exploits in games is very interesting. This industry as well has evolved um, from, they're at the point now where they're finding memory corruption bugs in the games, using the games the way they're intended to be used just to beat the games faster. That's what speed running is. So this, when I saw this and read this, I was, I was just amazed. Um, how well do they have to know how Zelda works to do this? I think the, the issue was uh, he had Zelda lifting rocks up and down for a certain number of times and did a whole bunch of other things to find this memory corruption. That's amazing to me. He knew the game so well that he was able to do this. So if I could do this for a client, that would provide a lot of value, I think. Um, race conditions are interesting. I think it's a nice mix of assertion and injection. Um, I predict we will see the same shift that we saw in injection bugs going from A6 to A1. I predict we'll see the same thing in race conditions. Because of that, uh, because um, in 2009, Burp Turbo, Turbo Intruder came out. That's a great tool. It uh, does to race conditions what the scanner did to SQL injection bugs. It makes it very easy, has a nice GUI. It makes it easy to uh, try to take advantage of these bugs. So just to recap the goals, um, I hope I uh, you know, talked about my opinion on how web security is changing, has evolved. Um, I hope that the history I showed backed up that opinion. Um, I hope you guys uh, know what I mean by assertions. And if you are testers, try to, um, you know, I hope you'll take away from this talk, when you go into your next assessment, you will go into it with an assertion frame of mind. You won't just look for injection bugs. You will go in there using the app. While you use it, you will define the behavior as a security expert and then try to break that for the client. Um, and yeah, I just hope I uh, talked a little bit about where it's going. And thank you guys for uh, attending my talk.